So here we're asked to simplify the square root of 153. And the square root of 153 is not a perfect square. So it's asking us to simplify it, reduce it down like we would a fraction. For example, if we had the fraction 2 6, we wouldn't leave it as 2 6. Simplified would be 1 3rd as we pull out a 2 from both. If we pull out a 2 from our 2 and a 2 from our 6, 2 over 2 is 1, and, we're, and we reduce this down to 1 third. It's equivalent. They're both 0.33 uh, as a decimal form, but this is our simplified version. So this is what it's asking us to do is write this in a more simplified version. It's not asking us to just plug it into the calculator and get a decimal approximation. It's asking us to simplify it like we would reduce a, a fraction. So let's look at a, a different example in order to understand how to do this. If we had, for example, the square root of 2x squared, um, we can rewrite this as an equivalent expression here as the square root of 2 times the square root of x squared because when we're multiplying radicals we just multiply the radicands and then we could resolve these separately well remember when we are looking for a square root we're looking for something when multiplied by itself equals our number under here so or our radicand so for example if we have the square root of y we're looking for two numbers or one number excuse me when multiplied by itself is equal to this number well, this one should be fairly straightforward because we have x times x, of course, is equal to x squared. So the square root of x squared, these are inverse operations and they negate each other. So they cross each other out and we're left with the square root of 2 times x, or we could rewrite that as x times the square root of 2, or if we want to keep it in this order, square root of 2 times x. Either way is fine. Okay, so what we're trying to do then is pull out any perfect square f from this number in the radicand and leave whatever is left over, any factor that's left over, under the radical. And the way we do that is through prime factorization. We can break this down into factors. Now, 153 it isn't easily factored, but what I'm looking at here is I see 15 and 3. I know that 3 goes into 15 and 3 also goes into 3. So if I pulled out a 3 or divided 153 by 3, that's going to leave me with 51. And I could again see if, if it reduces even more, 51 divided by 3 again. So what happens is now I have a prime number here, 3. Remember, a prime number is anything that is, uh, only has a factor of 1 and itself. 3, we can't multiply any um, whole number uh, except 1 and 3. Those are its only factors in order to get it. So this is a prime number. We're just going to bring it down. However, 51 can be factored even further into 3 times 17. And what we're doing here is we're just creating equivalent expressions. 3 times 51 is 153. And I guess I should show you so that we can see it more clearly. 3 times 51 is indeed 153. It's the same. And then if we break it down even further, 3 times 3 times 17 is still equal to 153. So this is what we call prime factorization because we have only prime numbers here at the bottom. Now what we're looking for is any couple, right? Two numbers when multiplied by themselves to themselves equals um, it equals that radicand or a, a perfect square. Here we have a perfect square three times three. It's a couple. 3 times 3 we know is 9. We could, re, we could express this again as the square root of 9 times the square root of 17. The square root of 9 we know is 3, and the square root of 17 is not a perfect square, and this is what we simplify it down to. And the other way we can think about it is anytime you have a couplet here, 
one of those numbers comes to the outside of the radical. So this couple here, the three comes to the outside and anything left over that is not in a couplet is left under the radical. And there is our simplified expression. And we can verify that on the calculator by first finding out, well, what is the square root of 153? It's approximately 12.3693. And then we can verify that we've simplified it in this, this expression here is the same value by saying three times and then the square root of 17 should equal the same number.